British middleweight champion Mick Leahy versus Wally Swift, a title bout at Nottingham Ice Stadium. And it's the end. Referee Jack Hart doesn't hesitate. And the new middleweight champion Wally Swift wins the Lonsdale belt presented by Lord Scarsdale. <laughs> 23 years on, Wally Swift is still very much a boxing man. But after 88 professional bouts, his main interest these days is in his two boxing sons. 20-year-old Wally Jr., a talented middleweight, and Tony, just 18, but with half a dozen good victories already under his belt. Unlike most boxers, the Swift lads have impressive academic records. Tony possesses eight O-levels, and young Wally went to Manchester University. But this mixture of brawn and brains comes as no great surprise to their father, who's invested wisely over the years with the money he made as a fighter. Well, you need brains to box. You know, you, if your uh, opponent's as equal on everything, strength, physique, the one eventually who uh, succeeds will be the one with the best brains. Take it from me. You need brains to box. Wally Jr. and Tony are too young to remember their father's glory days and have only scrapbook memories to rely upon. But to them, boxing has always been a part of their lives. It's been out since we've been kids. It's been part of his life. Seems a shame to throw it away. Something we'll just carry on. So hopefully we'll make it. And if we don't then, it's a bit of bad luck, but hopefully we'll make it and make a name for ourselves. You say we both got steady jobs, so we can always, we're always learning somewhere to, to fall back on if the boxing don't go. The two lads are managed by their father. They live at the family home at Knoll in Warwickshire. And until now, Wally Jr. has been boxing under an assumed name. It's helped to take some of the publicity pressure off an aspiring talent. They're certainly both better than I was. That, that's a fact. There's, there's no such thing as people saying to me, so, or saying to the lads, oh, you'll never be as good as your dad. They'll be better. And I think Wally's better than me now. Well, so, well, he's asked the question so many times, I think. I think he's just like a god. Or whether it's whether it's true or not, it's immaterial, really. It's just something to say to him. Hopefully we are. If we are, then we ought to, we ought to both be champions, I think. Well, athletics now, and appearing in Great Britain's Indoor International in Hungary this week, a remarkable new... Welcome to Fight Night from the Victoria Leisure Centre in Nottingham, where the unbeaten light heavyweight Tony Wilson faces the biggest test of his career. Can Wilson make it 10 out of 10 by beating the experienced Londoner, Keith Bristol, and so earn himself the right to a challenge to Tom Collins for his British title? Well, Wilson, who's from Wolverhampton, turned pro two years ago after boxing for Great Britain in the Los Angeles Olympics. He's won eight of his nine contests inside the distance, the latest coming against Pat Strawn from the Bahamas on fight night back in December. Oh, what a punch. Dropped into his boots, and the referee's got to stop it. Keith Bristol provides the toughest test so far for Wilson. He fought Dennis Andres for the British title 13 months ago and has been beaten only eight times in 32 fights. So, it's the final eliminator then for the British light heavyweight title. It's scheduled for 10 rounds as we join our commentators, Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. Well, I uh, hope that Nicky Van doesn't have too much to say to them because there's a lot of tension flying around, it would seem, between Wilson and Bristol. And Three round round. So a very important contest now because the winner of this one is an officially ordered final eliminator to fight Tom Collins of Leeds now for the British Championship. Tony Wilson now 
in the red trunk, so no real hard puncher. On the other hand, uh, Keith Bristol knows his way around a bit. He's had three fights with Dennis Andres. He didn't win any, uh, win any of them, though. But boxed in good company. And I don't think that they're going to be laughing around at uh, the start of this one. Scheduled for 10. There you are. You see, Mickey Van, I had a feeling he might have to dive in a bit early and uh, stamp his little bit of authority on the fight at the start. But they were sort of gesturing before the fight with showing each other the right hand punch. This is what you're going to get, etc. A bit of show business has been creeping into this game quite a bit since our man Muhammad Ali. But uh, on paper, I must say, Jim, it looks a very even match. Yeah, it is an even match. I, I would say probably Wilson has the edge in most departments except experience. But uh, we can see what uh, Wilson has in his mind. He's not looking to land any feeling feeler type punches that say uh, power with every punch he is set to throw here. Oh, and as you said it, I'll tell you that, Jim, what a right hand punch. He got right in close before he threw it. And it looks as though it's all going to be all over in the first. What a punch. Nine and out, and he's got to be counted out, as they say, in the act of rising. No, he's saying box on. I don't believe that one. I really don't believe that one, because he was definitely more than 10 seconds. And now he's out on the commentary position box, and there's no way that he can allow this contest to go on. And he's going through the formality. They actually are allowed more than 10 to get back in the ring if they're out of the ring, and they mustn't get back with anybody else pushing them back. And I'm sorry that he didn't stop it right away, Jim. That, that right hand punch that put the Bristol over was a cracking punch. He did not recover from it. I'm surprised. I, I suppose that the fact that there was a, a, a title fight for the winner at stake, he maybe allowed it to go in a little bit longer than he should have done. But uh, that right hand finished it for, for Bristol. I don't and think the they allowed it to go any further. And we'll have a look at it now in replay, Jimmy. We'll just see that first knockdown. Obviously, this is the one, of course, that uh, created all the damage. And there it is. Bang. He brought it right over the top landed perfectly and he was going to throw another one but there was no way it would ever reach down there and the second replay jim yeah that that was a perfect right hand punch the one that put him over he never really got a chance to recover from it uh, bristol was really finished for the night uh, he didn't have anything to offer at all unfortunately he went through the ropes just a bit now and uh, he could have seriously injured himself but uh wilson came tonight with one thing in his mind and uh, he achieved that, but uh, thankfully Bristol, Bristol doesn't seem to have been injured, but that was a terrible fall out of the ring, which I feel was a little bit unnecessary. Tony, congratulations. That is the most experienced opponent you've met, but surely you didn't think it would finish that quickly. Oh, I know. He's a, he's a great, well, he's a great fighter. Kept moving. I know that before the fight, that would be awkward. I was decent with about six, seven rounds, but I was shocked the way it came, but the way we trained, me and Jimmy, and the way Jimmy was, was telling me, keep repeating, which was, that would be a hard but fight. You were obviously looking for the big punch and, and not a series of punches, no, the not, way you were shaping not, up. Not really, because the point was, he was, we know that was slippery, and he threw right hands. And I realised when he threw his right hand, he was leaving himself open. So I threw the right hand over, with a bit of luck, it, it connected. Well, let's take you through the two knockdowns. This is the first one. <laughs> we can see that he let his guard down and let's throw the right hand over. Were you surprised that the referee didn't stop it at that point? Yes, I did. I did. He was hurt. But again, the referee, you got to agree with everything the referee says. Well, you got on with it. And what happens yeah. here? Well, I just, kept, just saw that he was hurt, so I just kept piling punches. And they had to stop it. He was hurt badly. And I thank God that he never got hurt. Anyway, we're going to give Keith Bristol a lot of credit because he's a great fighter. Well, he didn't look a great fighter tonight because you didn't allow him to. Yeah. Um, you were in terrific form there, 10 out of 10, and suddenly you're in for a British title. Oh, yes. Well, I'll leave it up to my trainer, my oh, manager. Fight yeah, fight a British title now. The one thing is, of course, we don't know quite whether you're going to be tested yet. I mean, you haven't been 10 rounds. No, but I train for 10 rounds. You train for 10, 10 rounds. rounds. 10, I mean, going the distance is no problem, really, because the training what we go through is a kind of like a special type of training and it's very hard and to do 10 rounds I was looking forward to do 10 rounds well you've beaten Pat Strawn on fight night and you've had a sensational fight here tonight we're gonna watch your career with progress congratulations thank again much. thank you very much fine performance tonight then from Tony Wilson and on that form well he could well beat Tom Collins when they meet for the British title we need to take a short break but don't go away plenty more good action from nottingham including the local boy the new british cruiserweight champion roy smith will be right back
back and after that British champion the local Nottingham lad Roy Smith who won the British cruiserweight title in Alfreton on fight night a month ago with a very impressive win over Andy Straw now it's his first appearance back since then in front of his local crowd and he's up against the experienced Alex Panarski who's making a comeback after two years absence from the ring it's scheduled for eight three-minute rounds so there it is then, a big night for Roy Smith, his first appearance now in front of his home crowd as the new British cruiserweight champion. And the run down there from uh, referee Paul Thomas with uh, the old-timer Alex Panarski, who's been through this before a few times. For round one. So a champion appearance then by Roy Smith, but it's a non-title eight-rounder. And Alec Panarski from uh, Chesterfield, although he's been living in Bolton for quite a while, came in uh, as a substitute. His original opponent, uh, Chris Devine, went down with flu. And he is a hard old nut. At 33, he said, I know the wife and kids are going to stay up and watch this tonight, and I want to do well. So there you are, young Kate and Mark, if you're watching up in uh, Bolton. Dad's going to have a go at the champion. Of Roy Smith is uh, also a part-timer, and I don't think you should worry about that because we've got a world champion called Terry Marsh who's also a part-timer. In his case, a fireman. In uh, Smith's case, a security man. The weights weren't divulged. They both came in uh, beneath... 13.10 and the reason for that is that uh, if it was at 13.8 announced and Panarski should uh, throw a Sunday punch and knock the champion out they could declare the championship vacant even though it's an officially non-title fight so they've done that uh, really from the start of boxing two pounds over the championship limit well Panarski's played a bit of American style football now apparently uh, the right guard with the new bolt braves and it looks at jim as though he's that's what he's been doing this last year or so the way he's sparring there yeah well i, I don't think panarski intends trying to match smith for speed um, i was very impressed by smith uh, when he won the title very sharp he, he moves around well he has good balance and uh, some of the nice uh, clever little right hands he, he threw were impressive so uh, he's the type of fighter who can take his time and enjoy himself and uh, I think Alex is going to have a hard job uh, matching him in any department. Yes, he fought a very brainy contest against Andy Strawn at Alfreton on fight night last month. So it's good to see a champion back in action again, and particularly in his hometown. And they're looking forward to do, try to defend his title in Nottingham. We haven't seen a title fight here since uh, Dave Needham and Paddy Maguire. Not to crack Alex Panarski, but uh, Smith has the boxing ability. And there's the career record then for Roy Smith. He's lost to Sammy Reeson, who previously held the championship twice. Stopped by uh, Jimmy Price. It's the only time he's actually taken account apparently in his pro career, Roy Smith. And uh, the face coming into the picture there is a former world away and middleweight champion of Britain, Wally Swift from Nottingham. So there's Panarski then at uh, 33, you could say, coming towards the end of having his last fling there with uh, Tommy Brooks working in the ring. And the old veteran there, Billy Shimfield, outside. Round two. Into round two, then, of this scheduled eight-rounder. The show here in the Nottingham Leisure Centre, sponsored by Croxley Script, as usual, on this series. 
and it looks as though it's going to be lively too at the start because obviously Bernarski knows he has no chance of outpointing Smith he just isn't sharp enough or has the style to do it he's got to do it with strength and roughhouse stuff he went 10 rounds with uh, Dennis Andrews the former world champion then back in 81 and he has a win over the present champion Tom Collins that's the light heavyweight championship not cruiserweight Well, he hasn't fought to uh, Panarski since October 85, Jim, but I tell you, he must have got, got himself into a bit of shape for this. Maybe that American football's done him some good. Yeah, he's looking uh, fit enough. I don't know, maybe if he reckons he has uh, five or six good rounds in him and he's just going to have a real go in the early stages, or if he reckons he's fit enough to hold this pace all the way through, I don't know. But I think the biggest danger at this moment to Smith as uh, maybe an accidental clash of heads because once in the first round and twice already in this round they've banged together and they uh, thankfully no damage has occurred but uh, I think Smith is getting a little bit too involved with Panarski he wants to stand off just uh, another six or seven inches and just try to keep him on the end of the jab he doesn't really want to get too much involved with Panarski oh and it looks so uh, referee Thomas is just uh, telling Mr Panarski don't rough it up too much <laughs> A minute left in the second. A lot of patience, Roy Smith. We saw that when he took the title from Andy Strawn. Just allowed Strawn, if I remember, to get on top a little bit, and then he just boxed his way in to style, and uh, he really won in style as well. As you say, Jim, they've got to keep turning the head away there. I'd hope that uh, Clash of Heads doesn't spoil this contest. I tell you what, if you went to central casting, you'd have no trouble here picking the face of the, the villain of the two, would you? See, when Smith boxed for the title, he showed a lot of caution in the early rounds. Uh, his concentration was good. He didn't make any mistakes. I think he's maybe just a little bit eager to please. I think he's a champion and he wants to please his local fans, but he's uh, a little bit too quick off the mark at times. A little bit of a spraying job there for Panaski, and here's the career record. As I said, he's, he's lost his share, but uh, in fairness to him, he's always been in uh, at the top level, and he had trouble making the then light heavyweight limit of 12-7. So the 13-8 cruiserweights, this is one of the reasons why this fellow made his comeback. So we can look at uh, what we're talking about there, Jim, a clash of heads, you see, they dive in, and then there it is there, you see, he comes up with it, Panarski, and uh, really rubs it in, and that was when the referee had a word with them. So, stop boxing before they started, the referee said there. And uh, I think he wants them to clean this up a bit. He's a bit worried about the old heads banging in, Jimmy. Yeah, well, it was developing and it's a fucking that off. Right, but, uh, I mean, it's not really easy. Fanarski's a good, solid pro. But he's not, you couldn't really call him a culture professional. And uh, I hope he doesn't try too much to clean up his act because I don't think he'll be very effective. He has to, to get his chin into his chest and get in close to be effective at all. He doesn't really want to stand off uh, jabbing as he's doing now. Well, we were talking about Panarski really having been out so long, but uh, playing football, etc., to get fit. And he also works for the Rambo Keep Fit Club in his town. Lack 
accurate puncher Roy Smith that at champion level you wouldn't call him that destructive because he's only actually stopped four of 14 wins see Smith is now standing off that that couple of inches are making all the difference he's just not getting as close to Panaska as he was in the first couple of rounds and now he's landing some good punches this is what he needed to do a little bit more punching room just stand off uh, three or four inches he works his way into a contest Jim doesn't he sort of a throwback to the old pros that is he does never does the flying start Smith does he I think he was just a little bit eager to please tonight I think he felt he was British champion that the fans had come along to, to see a champion at work and he was just a little bit eager to please in the first couple of rounds but this is more like uh, what we expect from him Good controlled boxing, looking for the openings and uh, finding them now. Minute to go in the third. Scheduled for eight then. Come on, sort yourselves out. I tell you, a lot of us could do with that advice. As you say, Jim, he's, he's not flying in so much now, Smith. He's a little bit worried about being caught with the head. And uh, although it's not total long range, it's just nice punching distance, isn't it? So there you are then, there's the details for the champion Roy Smith. And, uh, as I said, he's a part-timer, he calls himself as a boxer. He's also got a couple of children. <laughs> Probably his next challenger will be TJ, whom he defeated as an amateur. Jim's have a look at this replay. Well, Smith's work was a little bit better in that round. He was standing off a little bit, giving himself some punching room. A little bit involved here, uh, which didn't happen too often in the round. But uh, his work was far cleaner in that round. Second half, round four. Into the fourth round, then, of the scheduled eight. The first hometown appearance as champion now with the blue-shorted Roy Smith. In a non-title fight, and uh, old veteran Alex Panaski is giving him all the trouble he can handle. Really, Smith on top, all right, cleaner punching, better boxing, but uh, Panaski tried to rough it up a little bit because that's quite rightly the only chance he's got. He had to actually renew his boxing license last week. He allowed that to run out with a layoff, and that was due entirely to not really having to make uh, the 12 stone seven limit he nearly had to get half the stone off in his last contest against keith bristol he's a pretty rough customer to mix it with though jim panaski he, he hits a bit hard yeah he's a good solid professional he knows how to keep his chin out of harm's way and uh, he brings up some nice surprising hooks but uh, as, as long as Smith keeps his concentration, as he's doing now, that, that was a nice little bit of defensive work from Smith. But uh, you can never be caught napping with Panarski because he's a dangerous fellow. Surprising enough, if statistics can always prove everything, as we know. Um, but he's only actually knocked out one of all those fights he's had. But he, he's a solid punch. I think you know you've been in with him. See, you can see Smith fainting, looking for the opening there. It didn't come, and, and he didn't take any silly chances. But this, this is good work now from Smith. So you can see him looking for the, the, the place to, to put the punches. He's not throwing unless he's sure it's going to land. There's always a certain amount of lift in winning the championship, obviously. I mean, you must have gone through that when you won your first title. Yeah, well, uh, I think it, may, it, it troubled Smith in the first couple of rounds tonight because he was trying too much to impress. But now he's settled down, he's got his confidence. 
but you can actually see him looking for the openings now. sharper boxing now from Roy Smith. That really was to be expected, but it's it's a brave-hearted show by Alec Panarski. He hasn't, there he is, he hasn't been oh. A bit of a football scrum there by the look of it. then the details for Panarski as I said he's uh, at 33 once you get over the divide of 30 in the fight game you consider it a bit of a veteran his father apparently uh, was a boxer and uh, he also served in the infantry here so now you see Smith there it is, he faints and then he pulls away as he sees Panarski really chase him across the ring, but very good defensive boxing there. Wouldn't allow him to get caught and uh, finish up in a bit of a tag match. Second half, round five. Fifth round. And Roy Smith, the British cruiserweight champion, undeniably ahead on points. But Panarski now uh, has given it all he's got. You can't ask for more than that. He's got more losses than wins on his record, but he's always in there trying. And considering he's been out since uh, October 85, it's a good performance. And I suppose he's looking back and thinking, well, if Tom Collins can come back and win the light heavyweight championship, uh, he has a win over Collins in 84, Panarski. Telling both boxers not to make it untidy, then I don't think they're just holding on a little bit more than they should, uh, particularly Panarski. In fact, in a long career now, Panarski's actually only been disqualified once, and that was against Danny Lawford back in '80, and that was the last time that he fought here in Nottingham. So I know it's a prospect of a, of a double that he could do without, but I shouldn't think that will happen now. stand in the corner as a sitting target you know, one thing I noticed about Panarski he's not really given Smith too many chances to catch him cleanly on the chin he's very good at just dropping his head as Smith comes in keeping his head out of trouble uh, Smith's finding it difficult to, to get the clean punches home he's certainly winning the fight all right but see there again two punches none of them landed cleanly Panarski's very experienced and uh, he's doing a good job of surviving not the sort of opponent for Smith to make his fancy work look good, really. But he got tagged and I think hurt a little bit with that one, Jim, the way he hung on. That was the, the, the best right hand Smith has landed. That was a good punch. But there are signs that Panarski's beginning to blow a little bit. Maybe the, the pace is getting to him now, so you can expect Smith maybe to get through a bit more cleanly now.
So there he is, he's got the towel glove there, manager Wally Swift. Just putting the words of wisdom into uh, his boxer. He keeps the words fairly short in the corner, and that's exactly what good seconds are all about, because you can't put too many words into them. Jim, let's have a look at this replay. The big right coming up from Smith. That wasn't quite as clean as I, as I first thought. I mean, maybe the punch landed on the shoulder there. Uh, on replay, Round actually, the punch six. wasn't as good as I first thought. Round six. Scheduled for eight, then. This cruiserweight uh, non-title fight, of course. Now 12 rounds championships in Britain. And... Uh, just to remind you, Roy Smith did that against Andy Strawn at Alfreton last month to win this new weight introduction now at 13 stone 8 pounds. So referee Thomas in saying, when I say break, don't throw a punch. It's just called hitting on the break, which was permitted in British boxing. We were actually the last to change that clean break rule. We were always talking about the rules have stood the test of time in British boxing, but there's times when they should alter them a little quicker than they do. Well, that was a good stand and trade bit there, Jim. See, that's again, uh, Panaski let a couple of punches go, then got his chin out of trouble, then let another couple of punches go. He really is an experienced seasonal pro. Actually been a pro since 1973. Always oh, hurt a little bit with that Smith. It's a bit awkward the way he rushed in there and got Watch caught uh, a little low. appeal they're a little bit slack really i'll just have to duck when they start coming through the ropes over us here all right for jim he's used to slipping i'm getting a bit older these days with the fancy footwork very untidy round this jim yeah, it's a little bit untidy, but I'm giving full credit to Panarski because uh, he's in with the British champion. Uh, he hasn't been able to match him for ability or speed or anything, but never at any time has he made an easy night's work for him. And uh, Smith's finding it very difficult to get clean punches home. Panarski always just seems to move his, his head that little half inch just at the last second. And he's always keeping his chin out of harm's way. OK, he's not winning anything, but he's certainly making it difficult for Smith. Well, difficult enough with these attempted wrestling throws now. Hussein then from London uh, watching the show of course here a big fan he's now the Commonwealth lightweight champion and he's challenging Lloyd Christie of Wolverhampton for the British light welterweight championship and that'll be at the Albert Hall next month Second down, round seven. seventh round and uh, the polished boxing from the new cruiserweight champion Smith now has been smothered a few times by Rambo-like tactic, if you like, of Alec Panarski. And uh, Paul Thomas again reminding him not to get too rough with the head. Thank you. It's more rushing in than butting, Jim, really, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's just getting his head down. He has to get inside, and, and if he comes in with his chin hanging up high, he's a bit too obviously too experienced to do that. And uh, when Smith meets him, it's becoming a bit untidy. But uh, you have to sympathise if... Uh, 
if Panaski listens to the referee and tries to tidy it up, he's going to take more punches himself. It's a big-hearted show from Panaski. Let's face it, he must have been uh, well odds against when he came in, particularly as a substitute, Jim, and been out the ring for a while, but he's, he's giving it a real go. Yeah, but he has given us a show. I'm a little bit disappointed as the fight's going on with Smith because I thought Smith's performance would have improved as he went along, but he's still getting involved at close quarters. He hasn't used it. He's got, he has an excellent jab. He's not been able to use it. And uh, not quite the sharp performance uh, we were hoping for. Around about the third and fourth round, he looked as though he was getting his act together. But uh, he's never managed to subdue Panaski at any time. Well, if we're talking about Roy Smith's next challenger probably being the Londoner now, TJ, caught under the name of uh, Akai, J in the Olympic Games, and in fact ran into the great Evander Holyfield, which was bad luck for him, but he certainly had a very good fight with Andy Spawn. It won't be an easy fight, Jim, because he's a Panarski style, but uh, a bit more polished and harder yeah, hitter. A little bit more cultured than Panarski. But I tend to feel that Smith... Uh, won't box quite as badly as this again. Uh, I think maybe after winning the title, he's maybe thinking that the hard was fine. That was a good right hand from Smith there. That, now that was a good punch. But the Panaski looks like recovered. No, maybe not. Yeah, he's going to parlo. He's getting a bit right hand. Happy be he can afford it in the seventh round. And this is a brave stab by Panaski. He's looking to grab there like an octopus, but he just can't get hold of Smith. Tracked his fifth corner, and it's all over. So, as we were saying that he wasn't fighting too well in the last couple of rounds, Roy Smith, the British Cruiserweight Champion, found the right punch to pull the fight out of the fire, and then he unloaded all the ammunition, and the referee was right to jump in. So, a very happy man indeed, isn't he? 25 couple of kids at home and all those rope burns on his back none of which they feel at this stage of the fight this they're too uh, euphoric if you like to feel any kind of pain at this stage and everybody gets a friendly handshake jim have a look at the finish well that's the first time that uh, smith has had a chance to, to dominate and get right on top of panarski and full credit to him he took that chance that was a good hand he looked he, his eyes looked clear enough as though he recovered from the pinch obviously he hadn't done an excellent punch and a good finish from smith And this is the end now, Jim, as he starts to pin Panarski in uh, Smith's own corner, actually. Not that that makes any difference. All the same when you're getting hit. The referee's standing quite close to them now. And Panarski doing his best to try and find a way out there, a bit of a lifesaver. Uh, but he, can't, he just can't find the life raft as he's just about to start to slowly sink, really. And quite rightly, there it is. The referee goes in. Roy, after a very bright start, you seem to allow yourself to be smothered by Panarski until that punch came. That's right. He's a very powerful opponent, as you can see. And uh, he got out of me a few times, messing me about. And uh, unfortunately, I was a bit disappointed. I did let him sort of muck me about a bit. I'd like to have been a bit more clinical. Were you a bit anxious early on that you were a new champion and you want to impress the new British champion? Well, here I am in front of my hometown. We were fantastic people. And uh, I was a shade bit. I want to do so well. Buzz sort of on the border going over the top, you know what I mean? I, I wanted to do well, so I'm quite pleased with the outcome. Well, there's been quite a lot of activity behind the scenes here at Nottingham, trying to match Roy Smith for the first defence of his British Cruiserweight title against TJ from London. The pencil date at the moment is May the 12th from Alfreton. If it happens, then we'll be able to bring it to you directly that night on Fight Night. Meanwhile, we need to take a short break, but we've got two more cracking contests for you from this entertaining bill, so stay with us. Welcome back. Well, we've just seen the current British champion in Roy Smith and possibly a future champion in Tony Wilson. Now to the other end of the scale and a promising cruiserweight making his professional debut. Ian Bullock, who beat Danny Hassan from Wales in tremendous fashion tonight. Here's how it happened in the fourth of the six scheduled rounds. Second out, round four. 
new territory now for Ian Bullock in his first pro fight then having boxed three rounds of course as the amateurs and uh, very upset losing to John Foreman in the Midland ABAs in uh, February which is why he applied for his pro license uh, as he says a bit in disgust he thought was a decision well here it's, uh, no judges that's Paul Thomas there sole charge referee if it does go to points scheduled for six but Hassan now definitely picked up a bit struggled a little bit of the off because Bullock really took the fight to him and got on top and looked good particularly with the left hook I thought but uh, he's not bad with the right hand punch either now you can see that little reddening now around Bullock's well, there again the right hand as I say he, he didn't use that very much in the opening rounds but he's getting through with it now uh, Hassan now could really do with a win. He uh, hasn't had much of a start. Three losses on the turn. He's looking better this round now, Bullock again. Isn't yeah, he, he's got it back together again. Hassan looked a little bit weary at the end of the third round. Uh, he put in a fair bit of work, and I don't think he has the condition. And you can see the fight coming away from him now. Bullock has that little bit more drive, determination, and he's certainly a bit stronger. Now he's uh, a very handy pro start this for Bullock. I know that Hassan hasn't got a, a much of a winning record. In fact, he's still struggling to win one. And his legs are now are really walking stiffly as he backed off there. He couldn't control it. I think referee Paul Thomas has tried to go in. And now's the chance. And it's all over. With 13 seconds left in the fourth round then. He just simply collapsed under the momentum of those punches by this man, Ian Bullock from Bolsover. So you can see here, Jim, have a look at this yeah, replay of the finish. It's quite destructive. Yeah, well, the, the fight just turned away from his stand at the end up, and it was all Bullock. A nice little finish. The referee could maybe have moved in a little bit quicker, but a good finish from Bullock. Ian Bullock, another of the promising new names that we keep introducing to you on fight night. We're now to two hard-punching welterweights. Again, it's the best of six-round scheduled fight. Jimmy Thornton from Sheffield against Kelvin Mortimer from Wales. For round one. Well, a match then with known punchers, these two. The Southpaw from Sheffield, Jimmy Thornton. And uh, Kelvin Mortimer from the Ronda Valley. Only a pound between them. 10-5, Thornton. He's got a pound advantage. So I said they're going to start fast as well. So the Welshman actually wearing the, the touch of the Irish there with the green uh, waistband. And at the moment coming under fire there from uh, Irish Jimmy. to come back the game for Thornton. He hasn't fought since May 85. So a minute gone then in the opening round and uh, they certainly Thornton showing that he's come to do a bit of fighting. Scheduled for six. spot that bit of scribbling on Mortimer's trunks there. It looks as though the tattoo artist has dropped his needle down there to get KM. He looks a fair banger, doesn't he, Irish Thornton, Jim? Yeah, and, and he gets power into every punch, yeah. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't have to wind the punches up. Every one that comes out has full power behind him. Yeah, very impressive. every punch having said that Mortimer seems to have a fair bit of punching power himself I don't think there's any way this one's going to go the distance well 
well, the first punch to the Welshman said, uh, quite corrective, wasn't it, that left hand, as if to tell Thornton, you're not going to have this all your own way. They're both kind of well-built, sawn-off uh, welterweights, uh, Jim, really, aren't they? They're between yeah, the light there's there's another welter. one. Uh, both of uh, Mortimer's lead hooks have landed high. They've uh, badly shaken Thornton. No, I don't think there's any way this is going to go the full distance. No, they really are. A couple of bangers there, aren't they, as we come up to the end of the round. <laughs> There's uh, Jimmy Thornton's fight record there. Uh, he won that first round, but uh, Mortimer came back in the last 20 seconds or so to let him know what it was all about. And there's uh, the Welshman Mortimer and his record. And as, as you can see there, four or five wins then um, have been in the uh, knockouts. Second, Ronnie Rush from the Welsh stable, Di Gardner. Second up, round two. Into the second round, a very hard punching world weight scrap then between Jimmy Thornton of Sheffield, Kelvin Mortimer from the Ronda Valley. And Southpaw Thornton came out really winging his punches at the start. Just got a few corrective replies towards the end of the first round. To get an idea, really, of the weight division, this is the weight that uh, our own Lloyd Hannigan is world champion. themselves tucking inside and their heads held high so they, they both punch hard and neither of them are trying to slip inside punches are they yeah and i think that's the, the main reason we're not expecting it to, to last too long and mortimer just missed by a whisker there with that left hook Mortimer gets his hands up and takes uh, some of the, the force of the punch on his gloves. But uh, Thornton doesn't do the same. He's been caught cleanly a couple of times, and that might just make the difference. Because a couple of times, Thornton's been rocked. his time there the Welsh lad he, he, he waits for Thornton to come in and throw a few punches and then just lets him have a little crash away and then he replies oh nice side slip there we're just talking about not slipping and uh, he did it well there Mortimer and he's got to keep on doing it too because this fellow's going to keep nailing him almost as he's saying well hold up it's my turn Thornton after he Final round, 
and uh, Kelvin Mortimer in the white trunks to take a bit of a roasting from the manager or trainer I should say in the corner there Ronnie Rush and he's going to have a go in the last round and what a whack the pair of them have landed here all the way through both managed to stand up Jim and I don't know how they've done that but I figure they might just let it all go in the last round now but Mortimer certainly, if he wants to go home a winner, he's going to have to bring something out. It's going to have to be a knockout because he hasn't won a round. He landed a nice little left hand, uh, but uh, even he's, he's standing off again. He's not trying to follow up. Uh, I know it's always easier sitting here, but he just doesn't seem to want to win as much as Thornton does. No, I think quite right. He's, he's had to take some hard punches and wants to survive now. And you can't blame him for that because it needs a bit of heart to stay in there without going down under Thornton's fire. So two minutes to go. Well, some advice from the crowd. Always good at that. Watch it, Jim. Don't get careless. It's a bit late in the fight to tell him that, really. Well, they're both running out of strength, I suspect, just a little bit now, Jim, as you... It's been a hard battle. Yeah, it's been a tremendous pace all the way through, particularly from Thornton. He's put out a lot of work in every round. Obviously, he's feeling the pace a little bit now. But he just wants to keep pushing Mortimer back. doesn't want him to come forward now. Uh, he doesn't want a disaster now, obviously. But he just keeps pushing uh, Mortimer back, just keep the punches coming, keep himself out of danger. Well, trying his luck now, the Welshman, with the countdown half minute clock there. And what do you know about that? It looks as though he was going to count him for a second had he stayed down there. Well, Thornton's legs just give a little, little tremble there. I think he was shaking. That was another punch that caught him high. The same as a couple of early punches that troubled him. But he shouldn't be backing off. He's going to have to go in and meet Mortimer, push him back, stay up close, because Mortimer needs punching room. It won't hurt him if he stays close. Too late for a knockout, Jim. We're coming up to the bell. There it is. And there it is. An automatic decision, but only just at the last half minute there for Jimmy Thornton from Sheffield. And deserved the hugs from the cornermen there. It was a very hard battle indeed. Well, that wraps up the boxing from Nottingham. It's been a cracking bill, and we expect the same this time next week when we bring you Fight Night from Oldham and Najib Daho making the first defense of his British super featherweight title. He's up against Les Walsh, and it promises to be some defense. Well, Tony Wilson could well be on the way to his title. Certainly he has a crack against Tom Collins after a sensational first-round stoppage tonight. From us, good night. <laughs> Games. Welcome back. Wally Swift was a famous British champion in the 60s. These days he's based at Solly Hall and he's got two sons who he's managing as professional boxers. Wally Swift Jr. is quite a rarity. He had 11 O levels, three A levels, one of them an A grade in maths. He went to Manchester University but he gave it all up to be a professional boxer. Tonight he was in an even money match and what a cracker it turns out to be against Johnny Ashton of Alfreton. 
It's light middleweight, scheduled for eight rounds. We're going to have a look now at the best of the action. For round one. So the 11 stone division, this one, and Wally Swift in the blue, the son of a very competent indeed welterweight and middleweight champion in the corner of Dad Wally. He's won 12 and lost two and drawn one of his uh, career. And John Ashton from Alfredton, he's got a big support here. And that's the cheers you can hear. They, they really turn out full force from Alfredton. scheduled then for eight rounds and Swift now boxes out of Solly Hull although we always think he's from Nottingham because of his father and it seems only a couple of weeks ago but it's a bit more than that I'm afraid that uh, I gave Wally Swift the prize that I thought was the best boxer of the night at the National Association of Boys Clubs Championships But I must say, on paper, it looks a very lively match indeed. Uh, John Aston made his debut on the Fight Night Series at Alfreton, knocking out Steve Yoda in three rounds. All the soccer songs indeed, Jim, for a a fight of this calibre is very good, isn't he? He certainly brought a fan club with him, Ashton. Yeah, a nice little bit of atmosphere we're having, and uh, the fight itself is shaping up nicely. I don't think we've seen uh, young Wally Swift in a, in a bad fight yet, and uh, it's looking as though this is going to be pretty much typical. His two defeats were by the Londoner Dave Dent from the Terry Lawless camp. And uh, Dave Dent was a top-class amateur, and uh, maybe Wally Senior just put him a little shade too high on that one. Well, he must have done if the verdicts went against him. So, a minute to go then in the opening round. 10 stone, 13 swift, 11 stone Ashton. And the referee, former heavyweight from Birmingham, is Terry O'Connor. good variety of punches Wally Swift Jim as we come up to the end of the first yeah he throws nice punches they're just not getting through cleanly on target yet but only in the first round they uh, have plenty of time Ashton is a uh, quite a good campaigner himself uh, good reflexes and keeping himself out of trouble a towel glove actually not as the Americans are doing now we're in the rubber one that's merely just to help him wipe the face keep stop asking for the towel to be pulled in and he's had his share of stoppages the five of them from his 12 wins Ashton then from the, the fighting campuses in uh, Alfreton. Just a bit older, five years older in fact than Swift, uh, but less experienced. Into the second. He's got very much the style of the old man, actually, Jim. Not, perhaps not the strength. I mean, he really was a power man, Wally Smith, when he was going at it. But the, to look at him now at work is similar stance. Yeah, yeah, very, very similar. Uh, but Wally Senior was a very, very smart boxer, wasn't he? So oh. young, young Wally still got a lot of to learn, but uh, it's only young. Probably young Swift is 
one of the best educated boxers around. He spent a year at Manchester University and uh, I would have thought would prefer to stay stay on, but for some reason or other he's got the feel for the pro game as he was born into it and gave it up. All sorts of O levels and A levels. Started his boxing career under the name of Wally Reynolds, his mother's name. So he wouldn't have to be compared with uh, Swift, but I see no reason why he shouldn't box under Dad's correct name. Catch can crafty looking fight this two Jim, isn't it? They're both neat punches though. Yeah, well Swift is trying to close the range, but Ashton, the uh, clever boxer, you know, he's a uh, he's a good idea of the game, keeps himself out of trouble, and he obviously wants to keep this fight at long range. Good concentration. He hasn't really made any mistakes yet, and uh, young Swift is trying to force him into making mistakes. I didn't think uh, either boxer has got much time to listen to the songs, Jim. They've got other things on their mind. Yeah, still, it's all adding to the atmosphere, the uh, nice little atmosphere we're having here. And, uh, it's been good action all the way too. Not too many clinches and uh, plenty of punches thrown. defeating Steve Yorra in the third round on our series and uh, it's come on quite a bit since then by the way Wallace has kneeled down gives the boy a few little boxing hits there if he can do it like that now he'll be okay <laughs> so round five and Swift a little bit on top then in the fourth round fairly close until then Jimmy yeah it's a very close fight I think maybe now that the pace uh, has slowed down slightly because they've been going at a fair pace and uh, Swift uh, in the previous round he got a better chance to get into punching range and get the punches going maybe Ashton's just not as sharp at uh, getting out of trouble as he was earlier on so maybe Swift if he's going to have a chance now is the time Good fighting shape, both of them, aren't they? But the old chroniclers would have called fighting fit. Ashton now, in, in the early parts of the fight, he was going back, but he looked quite comfortable in going back, but now he seems under a little bit of pressure, a little bit of desperation in Ashton's work now. He's still well in the fight, okay, but he's, uh, he's not looking just as confident going back as he was earlier on. Now Swift's taking over a bit now. Minute to go. Oh, there's the one that got away, wasn't it? Just as well, and then he broke the lights. Back, 
he swerves very good at just keeping the same facial expression. He must be feeling the pace the same as Ashton is because he's been doing most of the work. But it's just deadpan and he just keeps it forcing himself forward. Ashton's beginning to look a little bit sorry for himself at times. Yeah, he's got to get a bit untidy now, Ashton. He's looking to hold on a little bit. That's the first signs of tiredness and frustration. Referee's got on with it well, though, uh, Terry O'Connor. He was once in a very mauling fight with a big man called Larry McDonald, and uh, I remember referee John Cole, when he tried to separate him, either sprained or fractured a wrist when he was trying to push these big fellas off him. John Cole, the man who's referee in Budger and Bruno next Saturday. Into the seventh round, and it's been very tightly contested early on. Uh, Wally Swift has had a couple of better rounds as the fight progressed, but uh, Ashton's always in there and looking a bit dangerous too. A little bit more work rate, I suspect, from Swift now, don't you? Yeah. Ashton in the previous round, they found a little bit more life, but uh, still a bit been forced back all the time. But here, here we go again, he still managed to find that little bit of uh, steam to come back at Swift. Very difficult one to score, because although Swift's been doing a lot of work, it took him a few rounds before that the punches started landing. think uh, Swift Senior needs to charge this boy up, Jimmy, just does it naturally. He comes out and does his thing, doesn't he? He gets on with it, got a lot of stamina. Yeah, he always boxes at a good pace and keeps uh, the pace going. As I say, he's not really a big puncher, but he does it on pressure and he's always in good shape. minute to go in the seventh round schedule for eight and the sort of contest where the referees have very little to say just encouraging on them a bit of it man has uh, done his share of course and fought to some of the better heavyweights in his time oh good action there by Ashton rocking a bit with those punches. Well, that was a, a replay there. It's certainly what that they needed to go into a clinch at the end of that, didn't they? Jim 
there is not a lot in this, is there? It's got to be no. close. It's got to be very close. I had feelings after the first four or five rounds that uh, Swift would have to dominate the second half of the fight to be sure of the verdict. And he hasn't. He's had a couple of good rounds, but we can see he's really dominated. It's been a cracking fight all the way through. So I think that the verdict must really be in the balance. Some pace though, they've got a bit untidy, it's true, mostly Ashton, he kind of claims a little bit, but uh, he's as brave as they come and as willing as anything, and he's made his match there with Swift, who's also doing likewise. I wonder their first fight was a, a bit of a cracker, but it was won by Swift on points. Two minutes to go. <laughs> and of course, if you're not a, a boxing addict, then the referee gives a sole verdict here with no judges. Save for European, Commonwealth and uh, World Championships. Given if a draw could be on the cards here, what do you think? Well, that wouldn't surprise me. It's, uh, it's a very difficult one. I don't envy the referee's job here because it's, uh, it's been a tight one all the way through. Swift has always had the greater work rate. He's always been forcing the pace. But uh, Ashton smothered a lot of his early work and uh, the punches were Min landing really, really cleanly on target. It's a very difficult one to score. But just, uh, I'm quite happy just to leave it to the referee here. It's a difficult job. Down to 60 seconds. And you don't blame them trying to pinch a little rest in the last uh, half minute anyway. he's got to make an instant decision of course because by the end of the ninth round he's got his plus marks on each side for each boxer so it doesn't take him long to add those up so now let's see and he's given it to Ashton doesn't please the expression on Wally Swift Sr's face there but he worked hard this lad early on and uh, Jim Watt and I both thought it was a close contest. I think he might have been forced to Jim. I might have given it to Swift with work rate, right? but I'm certainly, like you, not going to have an argument about it. Well, well was it a, a difficult uh, contest to judge because although Swift put out a lot of work, especially in the early part of the fight, uh, Ashton wasn't allowing him to land cleanly on target. He was caught short with his own counter punches. It was very difficult. Uh, th thankfully, I wasn't refereeing that one because uh, I think I would have felt maybe a draw would have kept everybody happy, although I don't like giving drawing decisions. What a cracking fight that was, and really you couldn't argue with the referee. I think you could have given it either way, but it went to Ashton. Well, that's where we're going to leave it for tonight, but just to remind a really big boxing coming up on your screens. On Saturday night, around half past ten, ITV had the big one, Bruno against Bugner. And then on Monday night, a fight night special with the British super featherweight title at stake, the return fight between the new champion, Najib Daho, and the old champion, Pat Caldell. Well, we saw a champion in the ring tonight. Wasn't much of a fight, but he's fit again after his car crash. He's back in business, and his name, of course, is Robert Dickey. From us, good night. <laughs>